So in this question, and you, if you want to follow along, this is Winter 11, Paper 41. We got two charges A and B in vacuum. Distance between the center of the sphere is 12 cm. Okay, and then you have point P in between. So this one is a very standard setup uh, for your electric field. Two sphere, one point you move in between. The charge on each sphere may be assumed to be a point charge at the center. P is movable, so we can translate from one end to another end. And this is the electric field strength E against X graph, right? Okay, so we know that there's a point in between where the electric field strength cancels out. Okay, state the evidence provided by the graph. The statements for the statements that the spheres are conductor and the charges on the spheres are both uh, positive or both negative, meaning they have the same polarity. Okay, we know that they are conductors because if you check out this part inside there, it is flat. If it's not conductors, right, the electric field strength inside won't be zero. Okay, so we know that the spheres are conductors is because there is a zero, E equal to zero. inside the spheres. Zero electric field strength. Okay. Charge on the spheres are either both positive or both negative. We know that it is either both positive or both negative is because somewhere in be in the middle here, the electric field strength will cancel out. So you have another, you have a sphere here. So one of the spheres are here. Then the other one, the tiny one is here. And at this point is where the electric field strength cancel out. So maybe this is one. And you may be thinking, okay, lah, maybe one is pulling it in this direction. E1. Then maybe this is two. And two is pulling it in this direction. This is E2. So for them to kind of cancel out, let's say this is your this is a positive charge because that is the definition of electric field strength, right? Force on a unit positive charge. So this is a positive charge. If positive charge is attracted to sphere one, then sphere one must be negative. So this must be negative. And if it's also attracted to sphere two, sphere two is also negative. That way we know that it can be both negative or it could be both positive. If they are both positive, then what will happen to this a positive charge would be um, E1 will repel. So this is E1, it will repel. And E2 will also repel. They will also cancel out. So they are either both negative or in this case, this one would be positive. So this repelling, right? And this one is also positive. So if it's positive, oops, if it's positive and positive, then you get this one. All right. So how do we know this zero point here? Lo? Because if let's say one is positive and one is negative, right? The, they both want the same thing for a positive charge. Does that make sense? If let's say, let me zoom out a bit to right here. If let's say you have a positive and a negative charge. Positive and a negative charge. And then you think about the forces on this positive test charge P. This one will be repelled by one. And then it will also be attracted by two. If that makes sense. So from this one, your E is never zero. Whereas for this case, your E will be zero. So we're going to write that down here. We could say something along the lines that E is equal to zero. Electric field strength equal to zero. Since electric field strength, or since E is a vector, The fields of A and B act in opposite direction. Cancel out. 
So because it acts in opposite direction, um, at any point between the spheres. That's why there's a point where they cancel out. All right, next. State the relation between electric field and potential gradient. So they are priming or giving you a warm up. Uh. Uh, this is equal to negative dv dr or dv dx, but it's better to just write the sentence. Uh. So E is equal to negative potential gradient. So we are probably going to use this relationship in part two. Okay. Use figure 4.2 to state and explain the distance x where the rate of change of potential. Rate of change of potential, when we write this, is dv dx or dv dr. So basically, where does your potential change the greatest? So... So in this case, we want dv dr to be maximum. Since E is equal to negative dv dr, I can say E here should also be maximum. Okay. So you want to state what is the value of x. Okay, so if they use x, then I change this to dv dx. No? Can be a bit flexible one. No? Okay, so we want to know when is x such that the rate of change is maximum. So for the rate of change to be maximum, this means the electric field strength has to be maximum. So when is electric field strength maximum? So you can say from, for this point, the electric field strength must have maximum value or magnitude. Okay, and this maximum value or magnitude happens at... Okay, let us go up and see. Where is E the biggest? Is it here? Nope. Is it here? Yep. This 150 something. Not 150 something, but 170. Du -du. Yep. This one looks like negative 170. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yep. And this one looks like... 115 positive okay so we are looking at magnitude it's important to understand that this e is magnitude how strong the field is and at which direction so when it's negative it is stronger in the direction to the right because it's pretty obvious that they're taking right as negative because now you're closer to this charge one okay so this is the largest magnitude so then this one would be at hang on to see the distance at this point here this point looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 11. What is 11.4 cm? Okay, so this one will be at 11.4 cm. Okay, minimum. Minimum is when dv dx is equal, when this one is minimum, this also means that the electric field strength will have minimum value. You want to write value, then you write magnitude. No? So this one is at minimum value at minimum magnitude. Or when E is equal to zero. So where is E equal to zero? Look at this one. Um, I would normally just take the midpoint. So it feels like it is zero all the way from here. One, two, three to here. I mean, it's really hard to tell, but I think it is zero from here, this point, to, I don't know, somewhere here, this point. So the midpoint here is around 7, 7.9. I mean, highlight this was from here to here. These three points looks like it's zero. I take the middle point at seven point nine. You just estimate lah. You can put eight. Okay. So this one you could say e equal to zero at x is equal to seven point nine cm. Or 
you may be thinking, means go other places where E equals zero, right? Nah. Here E equals zero. Here E equals zero. Okay, lor. So all these points also can say, you can say when X is between uh, zero and 1.4 and X is between 11.4 to 12. I will write inequality. Lah. Or X between... 0 cm to 1.4 cm or x between 11.4 cm to 12 cm. Okay, so normally when this kind of question come out, right, they will prime you or they will hint at you and say that we're going to use the idea of potential gradient. So then follow the question. No? They want the rate of change of potential. So the rate of change of potential is legit just dv dx or dv dr. And when is it maximum? Is when E is maximum, the largest value, largest magnitude. When is it minimum? Is when E is the minimum value or the smallest magnitude. All right, so that's it for the question.